friends, my name is Mei Lin and welcome back to my channel. I'm a flutist performer and music teacher located in the city of Kimloops, British Columbia and this is my channel where we do all things flute so thank you so much for joining me here today. In today's video we're going to be doing number 47 in the how to play the flute for beginners part 47 and we'll be introducing syncopation. So if you're interested then just keep on watching. As always if you have any questions throughout the video please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. I do my best to answer them as soon as I see them. Also if you have any issues when it comes to practicing please feel free to check out my free practice guide also located in the description down below. It gives you eight really easy steps to follow to help guide your practice sessions. Let's just get right into today's video. So of course we're going to be reading from my favorite book here. This is the Trevor Wise Beginners Book for the Flute Part 2 and we're going to be reading from page 70 and 71. So I'm going to put up the first little excerpt here that Mr. Y writes about syncopation right here. This is on page 70. So I'll just read out what he says here. So when the pulse or beat falls in the middle of a note, it is said to be syncopated. Syncopation usually adds a bouncy dance quality to a piece. The second tune should sound the same as the first tune. So those are the two examples at the bottom there when it talks about syncopation. So I'm just gonna elaborate a little bit more on what he wrote there. So essentially syncopation is when we are playing in a time signature, say we're in 4-4 four, four time for example, or even in 3-4 and you put the emphasis on the beat that isn't beat one. So let's say we put an emphasis on beat three instead of beat one in four four time. That might give you a little bit of a syncopated feel. So that just means that the beginning of the bar doesn't feel like the beginning of the bar essentially when it's written. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the two exercises here with the same melody, but with a different syncopation. So it's going to have a different feel to where the, f the beginning of the first bar is. So we're going to put up number one here. And of course, I'm just going to call this moderato in 2-2 two, two time. So we'll go very quickly through the six starter bits before getting into clapping and counting and then playing the piece. We're going to start with our key signature, so nothing crazy here. We don't have any accidental, so it can be in C major or A minor. Looking at the piece really quickly, we don't start on the tonic of A minor, however we do end on A, so that's a high indication. And then of course we're going to be looking at the raised seventh there. So we do have lots of G sharps written throughout, so I would say we're in A minor. Number two, of course, our time signature here is going to be important to note the difference between the two time signatures. So here we are in two, two times. So the top number tells us how many beats we have per measure. So we have two big beats per measure. And the bottom number tells us what kind of note those beats are. So two represents half note. So we have two half notes per measure. So it could kind of be counted like it's in four, four time, but the difference in two, two time and four, four time is that the beat emphasis must be on beats one and beats three as like strong, weak, strong, weak. But in four, four time, it would be strong, weak, medium, weak. So that's the difference between writing in two, two time and four, four time. Number three, of course, we're gonna be looking at our tempo indication. So here we have moderato, a half note equals 72. So of course, when I count it and play it, that is the tempo I will be doing it at. And then making sure that when you're practicing it, if you don't feel comfortable with it at that speed, slowing it down either in the playback settings or when you practice it just with your own metronome there to a tempo where you feel comfortable and you're not gonna be making a lot of mistakes. And then number four, we're gonna be looking at our dynamics. So we start on a piano there, and then we go to a mezzo forte at bar three, and then a forte at bar six, and then you're gonna play forte all the way to the end. And then number five, we're gonna be looking at our articulation. So here we do have some articulation, so we wanna make note that we have like staccatos here throughout the piece. Generally speaking, we have a pattern of bar one, bar three, and bar five, starting with a staccato there. And then at the end, second last bar to the end, we have a one slurred going over the beats one and and of beat one. And then we also have a staccato or beat three and beat four. Making sure that if you want to take a breath whenever you have a rest there, so those are those weird little squiggly lines, so making sure that you take a nice deep breath there, or if you also need one, there is a written breath mark there on the third to last bar if in case you need it. All right, and then number six, of course, our roadmap, and there's no repeats or anything, so just top to bottom, so essentially left to right. Okay, so now we're going to clap and count this. So this might throw you off a little bit. So with the metronome, I will be doing it at a half note equals 72. So every time you hear a tick of the metronome, it's either gonna be on beat one or beat three. So make sure you take note of that. If you feel like that is a little bit uncomfortable for you, you can always go and double the time. So it would be around 148 beats per minute, and that would give you the equivalent of each beat being a quarter note there. 
So just for sake of ease, instead of doing it one, two, one, two, I'll still count it as if it's in four, so it's easier for you to track which bar we are at. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, rest. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, rest. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, rest. All right, so now we're going to play that with the flute. Again, the half note equals 72, and making sure before you play to check all that your notes there, so you have the right notes and the right fingerings. Again, the fingering chart is in every single one of my videos in the description down below if you want to cross-reference there. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> All right, very good. So now we're going to go on and we're going to play the same exercise but with a different time signature. So I'm going to put up that one right over here. So this is just going to be moderato exercise number two. So here we have exactly the same kind of rhythm, but it's written out differently because we have a different time signature. So I'm not going to go over the key signature or anything like that. We will do it, the clap and count the same, of course. And then the quarter note here is going to equal 72. So the beat per minutes won't change. However, how we count it and subdivide it is just going to sound a little bit different. All right. And otherwise, everything else is exactly the same as it was in the first example. All right. So now we're going to clap and count it. So again, we're in 2-4, and that means that a quarter equals 72. 1, 2, 1, and 2, and 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 1, and 2, rest. All right, very good. So it should sound exactly the same rhythm-wise but counted a little bit different now that we are playing it with the quarter note being every strong beat here. All right, so now we're going to play it with the flute again, a quarter note equals 72. One, two, one, and two. to those side by side they would sound pretty much the same however how it feels when you play it is very different especially when you're counting it and clapping it. it can feel like two different melodies even though they are exactly the same so that's the importance of understanding syncopation and also the understanding of the different key signatures all right now we're going to play our first piece here that has syncopation in it so this is going to be the scotch dance and I'm gonna put it up right over here so we'll go through our first six starter bits and then clapping counting and then playing the piece of course so number one we're gonna be looking at our key signature so of course we're looking between the treble clef and our time signature so we have no accidentals so that means it can either be c major or it's relative minor a minor so we're going to look at the first and last notes to see if we have any indication of the tonic there so we do not start on the tonic c however e is part of the c major triad so it would be c d e f g so we do have that and then we do definitely end on a c if you look to the fine so that's going to be on the second line third bar there that's a strong indication that we are in C major. We'll always check to see if we have any indication of the minor key as well. So again, finding the minor key, going down three letter names. So C, B, A, of course, so A minor. And then we're going to see if we can find the raised seventh or the raised sixth. So again, going down one semitone from the tonic there. So A is going to go down one semitone is G sharp. And then, of course, we're going to see if we can find any F sharps as well. So I don't see any throughout the piece here, just one accidental D sharp later, but I would say we're in C major. Number two, we're going to be looking at our time signature. So here we are written two over four, so that's two four time, so two quarter notes per measure. Number three, we're going to be looking at our tempo indication here. So we have allegro, or sorry, we have allegretto, so it's a quarter note equals 90. So again, when I clap and count, I'll be doing that at this speed, slow it down when you are practicing it yourself. Number four, we're going to be looking at our dynamics. So here we start on a piano, and then we don't have anything else written until the second bar to the end of the first line there. So then we have mezzo forte, and then we don't have anything written up until the beginning of the repeat sign in the second line there. So we have forte, and of course we're going to be playing that up until the piano. So suddenly come right down in the last bar there, the second line. 
piano all the way up until the third line second bar where we have mezzo forte and then you have a beautiful crescendo all the way until the end there so you can either end on a forte i think that would probably be the best dynamic marking there because when you repeat, you also come back to a forte. And then number five, we're going to be looking at our articulation here. So we have lots of slurs and staccatos here. So definitely make sure that you take note of where you are seeing slurs and staccatos and if there are any patterns when you're playing the music. So I can see that generally speaking, when we have 16th notes, we have the 16th slurred. So that's in sets of twos or in the sets of fours. So making sure you always see that. And then we have repeated eighth notes coming after another, not necessarily the exact same note but in rhythm wise we have them playing staccato so making sure that you play those nice and short but not um, with using the tongue so just a nice extra ha huh, but a little bit shorter huh, so nice and detached all right and then finally we're going to go on to number six our root map so here we do have some interesting repeats so what you're going to do at the beginning is you're going to play it as usual until you get to that repeat sign so then you're going to make note that we have the repeat sign and then you're going to play from there all the way to the end and then at the end you see the repeat sign there as well so you're going to go back the second time play that so that's going to be the second line and uh, middle of the second line there all the way until the end where you're going to then go back to the beginning so dc alfine so that means de capo. So remember de capo is like wearing a hat, de cap. All that means you're gonna go all the way up to the beginning and then you're going to then play it all the way into that fini and then you're at the end. Just to shorten that a bit. So you're gonna play from the beginning all the way to the end, repeat at the repeat sign, and then you're gonna go all the way back to the beginning and then play up until that repeat sign. And then don't forget to note that when you are repeating the second time, you will be doing a little bit of a rallentando. So that means you're gonna slow down gradually just to place it a little bit more before playing it at the beginning again. All right, so now we're going to clap and count it. So I'm not going to do any of the repeats here or the decapos, but I, would, I will do that when we play it with the flute. One, two, one e and two e and a one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and a one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two e and a one and two and one e and a two and a one and two and one e and a two e and a one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and all right, so that's definitely a little bit tricky to count at that tempo. So definitely go and slow it down to a tempo where you're very comfortable with it and then work from there. All right, now we're going to play it with the flute. So again, making sure that you cross-reference any of the notes there, circling any of the accidentals and the breath marks. So we'll do it at the final tempo here where a quarter note equals 90. One, two, one, and a... That should be a challenging little song there. So of course, making sure that you are cross-referencing all of your work here. And if you find that you're having difficulties with certain areas, make sure that you break it down until it's really, really nice and simple. So I like to even work between two notes, checking any of your fingerings and then your articulations as well, because I know there can be a lot to read there when you're reading it the first time with the dynamics and the articulation. So just take it one step at a time and slowly add in all the other elements until you find that you're playing all of them. So I recommend first of all making sure that you have the correct notes always first because you can't play the piece correctly with any of the articulations and the dynamic markings if you don't have the correct notes. So number one, making sure that you have the correct notes. Number two, then you're going to make sure you have the correct articulation. And then at the end there, making sure number three 
then you have the dynamics. Usually the dynamics will come last as long as you have the correct rhythm, you have the correct notes, and then you have the correct articulation. Those are definitely the most important things there. Okay, and then the last piece for today is going to be a duet here. So this is milonga. So I'm going to put up the score right over here. So we're going to be doing our normal clap in and count. And at the end, we'll be doing it for both parts. So we'll be teaching both parts here. And then at the very end, uh, before we end the video, I'll make sure that we have a, or maybe at the end of the video, whatever works best for editing, I will be putting up a final version of both of the duets together, just so you can have an idea of what it sounds like when you're practicing it with me or by yourself. So we're going to go through our first six starter bits before clapping and counting. The key signature here is going to be looking between the accents of the treble clef and the time signature. So we see one flat there, so that can either be F major or D minor. So we're going to look at our first notes and our last notes to see if we have the tonic note in either of the parts there. We start on the tonic note in the second part, but then we end on the tonic note in the first part. So it's a high indication that we're in F major, but of course we're going to see if we have any indication of the minor key. So again, going down three letter names, F, E, D. So that means D minor. So we're going to see if we can find any C sharps, which is the raised seventh, or any B naturals, which would be that raised sixth. So we do have a few raised six here, but it's mostly in a chromatic motion. So I wouldn't say it has any strong indication of key signature. And then also, let me see if you have any C sharps. I don't see any, so I would say we are in F major. Number two is going to be our time signature, so two over four, so that means two quarter notes per measure. Number three is our tempo indication, so moderato, and so that means here we have a quarter note equals 80. Number four is our dynamics, so we start with the mezzo forte, and then we don't have really anything written until the second line last bar there, where we have forte. And then we do have, if you look at the third line last bar, a forte all the way up into that piano, and then we have a nice crescendo in that last line, second bar, up into the first or the second repeat, depending on which time you're playing it. Number five is our articulation. So we do have, again, a mixture here of the slurs and staccatos. So make sure that you are paying attention to those by either circling them or coloring them in, whatever works best for you. Again, trying to find any patterns here. I definitely noticed that whenever we have three sixteenth notes that they're all slurred together, so make sure you take note of that. And then specifically, I'm looking at the first line of the first part. Let's see, one, two, bar three, we do have a breath accent. So that means you're gonna have a little extra ha huh, uh, on that note to give a little bit more emphasis on the beginning. And then six here we have our roadmap. So we're going to be seeing if we have any repeats, which we do. So how we're gonna play this is we're gonna start at the beginning. We're gonna play it like usual until the third line where we're gonna take note of the beginning of that repeat sign. You're gonna play all the way through to the first ending. And then once you reach the first ending, you're going to repeat it back to the beginning of line three, play all through that. And then you're gonna finish on the second ending. So now we're going to clap and count this. So again, E quarter note equals 80. And of course, if you have any trepidations when it comes to the clapping and counting here, always write the rhythms on top. So it's always good to cross reference that because there are definitely some tricky rhythms in here. One, two, one E and a two E and a one E and a two and one and two E and a one and two and one and two E and a one E and a two E and a one and two E and a one and one and two and a one and a two and one and two and one and a two and one and two and a one and a one and two and one and two and a one and two and a one two and a all right, so that's going to be the first part there. So I'm not clapping the second ending just because it is just two eighth notes there. So of course, I would highly recommend slowing that down because it is really tricky to line it up. So making sure you get the one E and a. So that I'm looking specifically at the second full bar there. So one E and a two and one E and a two. So making sure you're getting that rhythm and then making sure you're also getting the dotted eighth and sixteenth. So one E and a two. E and a two. So those are definitely going to be the trickiest parts of this piece is switching between those syncopated rhythms. All right, so now we're going to play this with the flute. So we're going to be doing it at the final tempo here. So of course, the chord note equals 80. And again, as a reminder, making sure that you cross-reference any of the fingerings here with the correct notes so you have all the right notes before you start playing. One, two, one. <laughs>
again, I would highly recommend sewing that down so you can get it at a nice, even really nice feel to it. So maybe that would be quarter to equals 70 or 72. We kind of give you the same feel if you find that uh, quarter to equals 80 is a little bit too fast for you. All right, now we're going to be doing the second part here. So I'm not going to clap and count it just because it is very similar. And most of the rhythms are actually a little bit more simplified here. So always recommend learning both parts because it's great to understand the music and how it works dynamically together. So I'm just going to play with the flute again with the repeats. One, two, one. <laughs> this video I just want to go back to the second part here I would highly recommend clapping and counting specifically the third line here with the what you do to and what you do to and what you do to so with that rhythm so making sure that you really understand that rhythm especially because it's being repeated so many times that you have it exactly correct for all of the iterations there even with the changing notes all right so that's going to be it for today's video as always if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comment section down below I do my best to answer them as soon as I see them and also please feel free to check out my free practice guide if you're interested in that. Of course, if you like this video, please be sure to press the like button and to subscribe for more videos just like this. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me here today and as always, happy flitting!